Good afternoon, guys. August 27th. Uh, doing something a little different today. I'd like to bring you... I found an old book of mine. I was moving around a bookshelf to set up my new computer room. And I saw this book, Where the Sidewalk Ends. Now, mine says, Where the Sidewalk Ends, the poems and drawings of Shel Silverstein. Because I don't have the audio version. Now, I've had this book since Christmas 1985. It was given to me by my aunt and uncle. Obviously, you know, I had a laugh at where the sidewalk ends because that's the biggest contention of people against flat earth. They say, okay, just go walk off the edge. And so when I saw that book, I had a chuckle. So what I'd like to do, guys... I just flipped through the book real quick the last couple minutes and I found some poems that were, I think, applicable of our situation. And while I don't know if Shel Silverstein wrote these to have a... to tell us anything, they do make me wonder. So... Uh, I've got, let's see, one, two, I don't know, it's probably six or seven poems here. shouldn't take too long. They're very short. But what I'd like you to do is um, comment on them. Let me know if what you think they're about or they're just kids' fun or if there's an underhanded meaning to them. So let's start with the very first poem of the book, page nine. Okay. <clears throat> If I could show you pictures, it would be showing you a picture of a candle, which is strange because it's the very first thing in the book, uh, past the title page, and, well, there's obvious correlation here between a candle, illumination, and the such. So, let's continue. The name of this poem is called Invitation. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, if you're a pretender, come sit by my fire. For we have some golden so for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. Let me try that again. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, come sit by my fire. For we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. It's the very first poem of the book. Next, we have magic. We're skipping one um, called the acrobats. But the third one in here is called Magic. You know, I didn't make that connection till just now, but it's the third one and it's on page 11. Sandra's seen a leprechaun. Eddie's touched a troll. Lori's danced with witches once. Charlie's found some goblins gold. Donald heard a mermaid sing. Susie spied an elf. But all the magic I have known, I've had to make myself. So this was kind of telling me all of these stories that everybody's telling you, but is there any magic? Huh. Interesting. Three, page, uh, sorry, third poem, page 11. <clears throat> Fourth poem, homemade book, page 12. Sorry, homemade boat. This boat that we built is just fine. And don't try to tell us it's not the sides and back are divine. It's just the bottom, I guess we forgot. So is this an allegory for America? Or NASA? Or something else? I don't know. That's a bit presumptive. I um, agree. I'm skipping a bunch of pages here. We're going to page 27. Um, now, I'm, I'm checking right now. This is... Copyrighted 1974. Um, I don't know if this is a first printing or what, but 
this is definitely an old book. Uh, you know, one of his older ones. So I'm just including that in case you think maybe this was a later revision or something. Okay. Next poem, page 27. It's called, Listen to the Mustn'ts. Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never-haves, then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. Anything can be. Is that a suggestion that things might not be as it seems? <clears throat> Next, on page 75. Oh, have you heard? Oh, have you heard? It's time for vaccination. I think someone put salt into your tea. I think they're giving us 11th month vacations and Florida has sunk into the sea. Oh, have you heard the president has measles? The, pre the principal has just burned down the school. Your hair is full of ants and purple weasels. April Fools! <laughs> Let's try that again, see if I can get it a little better. Again, the title, Oh, Have You Heard? Oh, have you heard it's time for vaccinations? I think someone put salt into your tea. They're giving us 11 month of vacations and Florida has sunk into the sea. Oh, have you heard the president has measles? The principal has just burned down the school. Your hair is full of ants and purple weasels. April fools. So this is about lies that I've told. It's quite interesting they start with vaccinations though next page 81 it's called no difference small as a peanut big as a giant we're all the same size when we turn off the light rich as a sultan poor as a mite we're all worth the same when we turn off the light Red, black, or orange, yellow, or white, we all look the same when we turn off the light. So maybe the way to make everything right is for God to just reach out and turn off the light. Now, most likely this is just about a light switch and an allegory, but is there the possibility that this has something to saying that there might not be something we're understanding about our son or about the light. And maybe without this lie, everybody would be the same. Is it possible that this lie about the sun and about the light is what's keeping the power structure and keeping the rich rich and keeping the distance between us? And without this, there is no difference. So now we come to the poem that has brought the title where the sidewalk ends this poem is called the edge of the world and it's on page 89 columbus said the world is round don't you believe a word of that for i've been down to the edge of the world sat on the edge where the wind wild wind whirled peeked over the ledge where the blue smoke curls and I can tell you, boys and girls, the world is flat. <laughs> Let's read that again. I kind of messed it up a little bit. The edge of the world. Columbus said the world is round? Don't you believe a word of that? For I've been down to the edge of the world, sat on the edge where the wild wind whirled, peeked over the ledge where the blue smoke curls, and I can tell you, boys and girls, the world is flat. And flat is capitalized with an apostrophe. So this was interesting. It just had me chuckling and made me think, you know, maybe there's a little more to this. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to it.